We're standing here in Charleston, South Carolina on the Battery, where slavery began. We believe in our roots and where we came from, and we want to just see it continue. Gullah is something that, in my mind, exists before the institution of slavery. When you stand up for what you believe is right, you better be ready because there's going to be all kinds of people stand up. So all that you see is what they want you to see. The story. The story is 400 years of slavery, of oppression, of affliction has finally ended. I'm standing in the front of the pineapple. Charleston uses this pineapple to welcome everyone to the holy city. Welcome and hospitality. But this is our symbol, the Gullah Geechee people. The pineapple says that we are finally going to have our redemption. Now that the 400 years is over, Donald Trump just signed this bill into Congress and it says that the anniversary is here. So now we can learn what it means to be free and equal. Here in the Holy City we can finally understand the truth about the Gullah Geechee people. Finally. I do. I, I believe it's a part of history that uh, we can't ignore because it's something that happened and you don't want to brush it under the, under the rug uh, and say it didn't happen because it did happen and it, uh, you know, people need to know about it and need to be reminded of it. I'm standing at one of the markers that shows you this was one of the significant areas for selling the largest amount of slaves here in Charleston. Now it gives you some detail, but some detail is not enough. This is not nearly clear enough. It's not at all accurate. Charleston was the wealthiest city, the number one city for selling slaves. And right here, right next to us, is the United States Custom House. The United States Custom House, out in the open, on the front steps, we were sold at the highest level. We made the most numbers for, for British, for the for British and America. And at the bottom of this Custom House, is a dungeon, a provost dungeon, where slaves were punished and tortured, not talked about. We need to be very clear about this history, and the markers that Charleston is giving is not clear at all. I just wrote this book, and this book is on the history, the real, on the true history of Charleston that they do not talk about. Ooh. Over 800 certified tour guides, four of us are black, and I'm the only one from Charleston. I grew up on that slave market, and they don't want me talking Aww. on tours. But that's the history. Right. That's the truth. That is right. That yeah, is the we truth. We need truth. They can't... Oh God, please have mercy on me. The slave master's children have all grown up, and now they are the men of Charleston's slave history called tourism. They look to swallow me whole, O oh God. Persecute them that seek to persecute me, and have no mercy on them that look to devour my soul. They fight every day to harass me and my father's business. The slave breakers' children work all day to worry and swallow me all up. There are more than 800 certified tour guides here in the holy city of Charleston's tourism, and the lion's share of them are white. 99% of them are white, and they love to control and to tell our black history and not their own history. And they do lie indeed. They whitewash our black history. They are always about the city spreading lies and claiming to be telling my family's history and telling my heritage of our fathers. All right. So we're out downtown Charleston, south of Broad, on Meeting Street. South of Broad is significant now for the money, for the, one of the richest part of the city. But Charleston will tell you that this is a carriage step. A carriage step is what Charleston tour guys tell you that this is, but this is a slave auction block. So when you see this, this is where my family, we were made to stand on these blocks while we were sold for money. Humans sold for money. And the tour guides will tell you that this is a carriage step. And what's interesting is there's a horse and carriage driving by right now. As you hear the horses walk by, a carriage step 
is not what this is. A carriage step is a giant step. It's like a porch which goes right up to a carriage and you walk right on into the carriage. This, though, is totally different. Slaves were sold here. We were made to stand here while you pick over us and handle us however you felt because we were not people, we were property. All over the city of Charleston, we have slave auction blocks. All over the city of Charleston, we were sold for money as property. And still today, lies are told. And no one knows what this truth is, but facts, we show you the images, we show you the information. Charleston sold us and they're still selling us right now by exploding the truth about the Gullah Geechee culture. Slave auction blocks are still present, hiding right in the front of your face. Standing here in Charleston's holy city, the only place where there's four corners of law in the same location. We have the city hall, city law. Then we have the county courthouse, county law. Then we have the post office, the federal courthouse, the federal law. And then we have the main one, which is the church, which is God's law. But the most important thing about this church is not that George Washington, Washington sat in pew number 43, which he did. It's the slave auction block that's still hiding in plain sight, hiding right in the front of the building on the side of the poles. Three slave auction blocks are still showing in the front of the church that Charleston always brags about, but they never mentioned the slave auction block that's still standing today. For more than 40 years, the slave master's perspective has totally mastered and colored my Galakichi. I like to see whites and blacks get along with elders. We're all the same. Ain't nobody no different from the next person. How can we heal unless we talk? Why hasn't this story been addressed until now? It's because who writes history books? So, we have been talking with a few tour guides, a few tour operators about the story. We need to understand that the beginning in Israel, Jerusalem, the beginning, Galatians 4, 26, the motherland of us all. Around 69 through 70 AD, the Romans slaughtered Jerusalem. And at that time, my people ran down into the southern territory, um, today called Africa, and the Hebrew Israelites, now in a foreign land, the Hamites, the Africans, and the Hebrews were Shemitic people, and then you have Japheth, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So in the land of the Africans, the Africans were not very happy with our people being there, being that we had total different cultures. And if you look on the map of Negroland, the map of 1747, the map maker's name is Emmanuel Bowman, um, it'll show you Negro land in Central Africa where a great deal of us settled. Um, the colonizers, the British and the French, made a deal with the Africans. And in the kingdom of Judah, Negro land, the kingdom of Judah, they found the tribe of Judah. And we all know that Christ comes from the tribe of Judah. The bloodline of Judah was found and if we follow the yellow brick road, following the money, the tribe of Judah, the kingdom of Judah, was found in a place that is called the Slave Coast, also known as the Gold Coast. Today is called Ghana. And today, the king of Ghana is apologizing for what their ancestors did to our ancestors, for their hand in slavery. At this point, to particularly to apologize deeply on behalf of the chiefs and people of Gold Coast and Ghana for the atrocities, the cruelty, the inhuman treatment that were committed 400 years ago by my ancestors during the Atlantic slave trade where over 400 years ago millions of our brothers and sisters 
were captured, sold, and transported under inhumane and cruel circumstances through Elmina Castle across to the Caribbeans and to the New World. On behalf of the chiefs and people of Ghana, I do render unqualified apology deep from the bottom of our hearts. Deep from our bottom of our hearts. And their apologizing is called Return to Ghana 2019. So anyone can look this up. But the 33rd parallel, Jerusalem, the perfect opposite, the 33rd parallel, Charleston, the holy city. There's only two holy cities, Charleston and Jerusalem. And this is the holy city still carrying a secret history, history. And history can be proven one way or another. So don't take my word for it. The facts show, historical facts and biblical facts, prove who we are. And the curse said that we would not be seen, we, we would be hidden right in plain sight, so our names has been changed. Many, many different nicknames like African American, names like uh, black, many different names. Um, Negro, colored, Afro-American, but our true name has never been changed. We're Hebrew Israelites. I come from the tribe of Judah. Gala is an ancient Hebrew word for redemption. This information is not my information. This is the world information that could only have been revealed after the 400 year curse has ended. 2020 starts the new year for us all to finally see. And how can we heal unless we talk? So talking about this issue is how we can all come together and heal and be one family again. I am Godfrey Galagichi Jack Kill of Ashleyville, the only Charleston native, full-blooded Galagichi guy in the holy city. With you. I and love to see. To make I, 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 I like to see whites and blacks get along together because we're all the same. We ain't nobody no different from the next person. People come from all over the world to hear and understand and see representation, fair, equal representation of black life, African life, as well as Charleston life and white life. So you know, I would definitely like to see black people better represented represented in Charleston, South Carolina. Here in the Holy City, we can finally understand the truth about the Gullah Geechee people. We feel different than everyone else or amongst my peers because I knew who I was. Charleston has done, has developed a very sophisticated system that uh, really limits free speech. I was too afraid to walk down public city streets in my dress. Deuteronomy is based on the Bible. That's the number one. <laughs> That's the number one. And whatever comes from that Bible is true. It's all true. Wow. And don't stop. 
Got Dude, it. protect him. Protect him. We got to protect this man, man. That, that's what we have left here. That's it. That's all you have left. This is it. You got to protect him. Because if you don't, we're going to lose a lot of history. A lot of history will be untold. And that's it. That's